Guys, I can't lie, the night before is a bit late to get started, but that doesn't mean you can't do well. What's up guys, my name's Neil, a fully qualified teacher and examiner who's taught thousands of children across the UK. I smashed my A-levels at 16, getting an A star in my maths exams. Now I'm the head of maths at my headspace, where I deliver lessons every single week. If you're in GCSE or A-level, sign up for a free lesson where I'm going for a past paper every single week. Find my number in the description. My first tip is that if you're struggling to remember key formulas, you should write them down on a post-it note. Memorize them in the short term. Then when you enter the exam, write them down on a piece of paper or on the front of your paper for reference so you don't need to worry about them anymore. For example, say you can't remember the volume of a cone. What is the volume of a cone, by the way? Should we ask the ice cream man? <laughs> anyway, going back, drop in the comments if you remember the formula for the volume of a cone. Write these formulas down on a small piece of paper, or you could be like me, tattoo the key formulas onto your wrists. I'm not irrational like Pi, but it's a permanent solution. <laughs> nice. Now I'm not fancy or anything, I do wear the same clothes every single day. I don't advocate for pretty flashcards. Like, come on guys, the beauty is in the maths, not the cards. Save that for geography. You need one card with the main key formulas. In the morning, wake up, have your chicken, broccoli and microwavable rice for breakfast and read the flashcard a few times. Then, a few times again before you enter the exam hall. And just to be very clear, do not revise maths this way. This is only for your formulas. Stick to practice papers otherwise, or else you'll be in a sign of trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys too, because I tell my students this all the time. So I'm gonna be for real, for real. Nobody has an issue with memory. It isn't just maths nerds like me who have great memory. Look at actors, for example, who work in theatre. They have to memorise hundreds of pages of scripts. Look at the geography nerds who have to memorise all those types of rocks. <laughs> Look at the history kids who have to memorise all those things that probably never happened. Like Henry VIII's wives and that. Shout out to the, his wives and that. It takes practice and repetition. Those of you who rely on a formula book or pretty flashcards in maths haven't done enough revision. And that is just straight facts. So if you find yourself still having to look and remind yourself of formulas, I'm sorry, my friend, but you're still not fully equated. Fully equated, you know. Be ready, get practicing. I believe in you. Don't be like a circle that can't find its center. Always going round in circles, pi r squared and that. Next suggestion, do not start from the back of the paper. Students ask me this all the time. Be smart about the situation. The students who get the top grades are not the ones who necessarily answer the hardest questions. You secure the top grade through mark accumulation. That is it. Remember, exams do not test intelligence. They really don't. They test your ability to play the system. So don't worry if you're not the bulb with the highest lumens. You might be asking, what does that even mean? My point exactly. Just joking. Anyways, you should worry about getting as many marks as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to smash the first set of questions. They say the early bird gets the worm, but in this case, it gets the grade and the freshest pastries at Lidl. Shout out everyone who shops at Lidl. Quick side note, do not do anything differently on exam day than you would any other day. Sleep, eating, whatever. Don't be like Jerry who tried to cram all nighters and ended up crashing like a test dummy. Check out my first exam tips video for more on that. Now, what happens if you don't know how to do a question? Or you started and you hit a brick wall. You just can't see a way out. Time's ticking, my friend. Wait, I don't even have a watch. Just skip it and move on and come back to it later. Like a boomerang that always comes back to you. Well, it should come back to you. This only seems to happen to people on TikTok though. Mine just ends up flying over the fence and hitting some dude picking weeds. If you're doing a proof question and notice you got the wrong answer, don't spend ages trying to find the mistake. You're wasting precious time. It is better to just start again. This actually happens with me when I'm recording my video solutions for my students on my main course. I make an error somewhere in the video and instead of me going back 
changing that small section in the video and having to edit the whole thing, it's just much quicker for me to re-record the whole video. For you guys working within such a... Sp <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. For you guys working within such a short span of time, under exam pressure, you're not going to find that missing minus sign and you're definitely not going to find out why one somehow equaled two. In that time, you could have solved it three times over, but don't do that in a real exam. It's best to start fresh, like that amazing feeling you get when you start a new pukka pad. Is it pukka pad or pukka pad? <laughs> Leave a comment down below. Spread out and use the spare pages at the back if needed. Nothing bad will happen if you start your working on a new page. My number one tip, especially for maths, is do not panic. Panic has never helped anyone in a maths exam, ever. I watched this video of an American dude who came across a bear. He said, don't panic, just stand here quietly. Look non-threatening. If this guy can face off with a damn bear, guys, you can chill sitting in front of some paper with numbers on it. Just breathe for one or two seconds and don't let anxiety multiply your problems. Ah, oh, that was good. I like that. <laughs> Don't stress yourself out in the morning of your exam either. Make sure the night before you have your pencil case stacked. But you don't need to fill your pencil case with 20 paper mate pens. One pen will be enough, surely. Actually, just in case, relax, man. Make sure you have your calculator, ruler. That's about it, if I'm honest. The rest should be supplied to you. Just double check with your teachers what will be given to you in the exam. Remember, you're a ruler of your own destiny. I'm getting good at these. If you're doing a multiple choice exam, the best advice I've ever received was from my old science teacher. No guys, I swear I'm not that old. My GCSE students always be cussing me out and saying my school photos were taken with Pythagoras, which is not true. But this tip is, do not look at the answers to the multiple choice. First, solve the problem and see if your answer is in the list of options. If it is, you're most likely correct. Move on, you'll be calculating your chances of success. Oof, that is good. As an examiner, I think this one is fundamental. In your exam, you need to be laying out all of your working out nice and neatly. Your examiner isn't your teacher. They do not recognize your handwriting and do not have patience for scruffy handwriting and layout. If your working looks like my kitten Chi Chi was scratching you to pieces at the same time, then the examiner may just give up on trying to read it. These things happen, guys. Don't put yourself at that disadvantage. Keep it neat, like a regular octagon. <laughs> Next, I know some of you are running a bit behind on your revision, so I'm going to say that you should be doing at least three papers before each of your exams. So for GCSE Maths, there'll be nine papers in total. Don't stress about them, but please make sure you do at least a few of them time, and perhaps get a friend to mark it for you, since if you mark it yourself, will be biased and generous. You need to know how much you're going to be able to complete of a paper and adjust accordingly. And if they give you a low grade, don't beat them up. That just isn't very nice, is it? No half measures out here. Oh, my puns are so sick. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. That's all I have for you today, guys. Good luck with your exams. Keep me updated with how they go in the comments. Remember to take care of yourselves, but not too much. I believe in you. And remember, in the world of mathematics, you've got to divide and conquer. Grade nine, Aquaman out. Peace. Guys, the ice cream man, he's so annoying. He'd be coming to our block of flats at like 10 p.m. It's five degrees outside and the volume from his speakers are so loud. It's like rattling my windows and that. <laughs>